Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Real Heroes Show. We've got Corey with you here for this video, and uh, we've we've done the prequel trilogy, we've done the original trilogy. It's time for the sequels, <laughs> for better or for worse. I know a lot of people have a lot of thoughts about these films, but uh, we're gonna do a 4K showdown between The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. So um, again, these are not reviews of these films. God, at this point, I'm not gonna touch that with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> this is only going to be an assessment of uh, both the audio and the video for these three discs. By the end of this, maybe you'll be able to pick one to purchase if you had to. Probably know which one that's gonna be for most people anyways already. So uh, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you could. We love making videos for all of you and any support we get helps us make more of them. So uh, to get into the packaging, um, these ones are also part of the Ultimate Collector's Edition, just like the prequels and the uh, original trilogy. So you've got your digital code, you've got your Blu-ray, you've got your 4K, and special features are again stacked underneath the 4K disc, which I have brought up before, I'm clumsy, I feel like I'm gonna break something when I'm doing that, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, one thing of note, the uh, Ultimate Collector's Edition of The Rise of Skywalker, the slip cover is a little different. It does not have the uh, specs for the disc on the back. It's got this neat little thing of uh, Kylo Ren and a Star Destroyer with a little X-Wing down there. Uh, it also says, warning, some flashing light scenes in this film may affect photosensitive viewers. So if you're seizure prone, uh, be careful with with this one we'll get into that in a minute but um, once you open it up and take the the slip off you do get all the specs on the disc so um, going into tech specs on these three discs um, they are all shot on film with some digital in there but they've got 4k digital intermediates which is fantastic 239 to 1 aspect ratio to align the look with um, the rest of the films hdr 10 for Force Awakens and The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the first batch of discs for The Last Jedi had a Dolby Vision HDR pass. Uh, and then later on, when the complete Skywalker saga came out, I think in 2020, um, they actually rolled that back and made it in HDR 10. Um, the disc I have that we'll be talking about today is Dolby Vision, um, but if you buy the, the big box set or any of the new versions today, it will probably be in, in HDR 10. Uh, all three also have Dolby Atmos for sound, so episodes one all the way through nine, as well as Rogue One and Solo, uh, all gonna come at you with some immersive object-based audio. So let's dive right in. Episode seven, The Force Awakens, The Return of Star Wars in 2015. Uh, one of the most insane lead-ups to a film I've ever seen. The, the fever pitch was at an all-time high for this. People were thirsty for their Star Wars, and it was awesome. Um, the movie's very pretty. Uh, you can tell right from the downbeat that it was clearly shot on film. Uh, the HDR can be blinding at certain spots. The, uh, the highlights are very, very bright with lasers and explosions and flashing lights and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's pretty, pretty killer. Um, some of the standout shots for me, uh, the Millennium Falcon chase on Jakku when they're going through the remains of the Star Destroyers from the Battle of Jakku, which you can read in Chuck Wendig's Aftermath series of books. Um, the X-Wings, when they're coming across the water to uh, to fight the First Order on Takadana is pretty incredible looking. Uh, and for me, I, I know it's a little bit gloomy and overcast, but um, the stuff on Octo all the way at the end just has a real filmic quality to it. It, it really looks a lot like the older films, which is kind of incredible to think that uh, they might have been using lesser camera gear because to get out to Skellig Michael, uh, the island is uh, pretty pretty restricting. So maybe they didn't have all the same stuff they'd normally shoot with. But to me, it works. I think it looks cool and it's kind of a nice bridge between um, episode six and episode seven. So um, for video, I'm going to give this one a solid nine out of ten. You're going to notice scores are high for these films. Um, they are newer. They, they, they look incredible. They're modern blockbusters. So uh, audio wise, it's great as well. Uh, feels like a new film when you when you listen to it and watch it. Uh, extremely deep LFE anytime the force is used or anytime a lightsaber turns on. Um, there's a significant amount of increased height effects throughout all this. So uh, anytime there's a space battle going on or they're 
running through a hallway or there's something overhead, you're, you're going to hear it. They use the height channels much more in these three films than they do in the previous six, at least to my untrained ears. Um, and there's also great surround sound uh, usage throughout. Any Anytime there's a dogfight, lasers are going around. It's, it's pretty killer. So uh, it is a little bit quiet as per a normal Disney release. That holds true with all three of these. So you do have to bump your uh, receiver up probably about five or six db uh compared to where you would normally listen so just be prepared for that but once you get it there it's pretty good uh audio on this one also gonna go with a, a nine out of ten so nines on both the video and the audio for the force awakens uh moving on to 2017's not divisive at all the last jedi directed by ryan johnson uh the non-jj abrams film in this sequel trilogy um to me this was shot by steve yedlin i think this film has the best cinematography uh out of all three of these sequel films uh very thoughtful compositions the way they track their shots the lenses they use really just it's a, it's a stellar looking film but uh, it has some some weird little quirks in its presentation i know it's it's in dolby vision it's the only one that has that type of hdr usage uh however like the the black levels they look like they're raised sometimes to the point almost where uh they look a little bit grayish so like uh for example when when ray and luke are fighting on octo at night in the rain it doesn't appear entirely dark it's almost like they shot night for day um or, or day for night or whatever the technique is which yedlin uses in knives out and it looks incredible um it just it doesn't 100 percent work for me uh in some of those spots in this film um but yet at the same time you know some of the stuff in snoke's throne room with uh kylo's helmet and his outfit and everything are some of the darkest inkiest blacks in the entire star wars saga so who knows not 100 percent sure what uh what the deal is with that it just it does look and feel very different from the force awakens and the rise of skywalker which i guess it's like poetry it rhymes that's pretty much how the films are laid out as well so uh audio again is terrific uh lightsabers hum with terrific lfe uh battle of crate at the end is an incredible use of surround sound there's stuff happening literally everywhere um but for me the best thing about this movie from the audio uh is when ray and kylo are having their little force time sessions where they're talking to each other through the force and they're on different planets um the the delay and the echo and the reverb and the way that it bounces from channel to channel and all around your head and it sweeps around the sound stage is super 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 cool it's a very convincing effect uh and it really pushes along the idea and the story that they're trying to tell so um for video on this one i'm uh, gonna go with an eight out of ten just because of those weird black levels in certain scenes audio is gonna also be a solid nine um so right up there with the uh with the force awakens uh and let's go to uh the rise of skywalker um this one 2019 jj abrams came back on to finish out both the sequel trilogy and the skywalker saga in total this is probably the one out of these three that i've watched the least not probably it's definitely the one i've watched the least it's not my favorite film on earth however it is a near demo worthy disc if you're looking to impress people with your 4k gear um video wise the highlights are extremely bright uh the stuff on exegol as the packaging says it may affect photosensitive uh viewers it's extremely bright it's gonna make you squint it's a lot of really bright really dark really bright really dark uh which you know if you're trying to show off your display is great uh, as long as you don't give anybody a seizure while they're watching it um the falcon sequence at the beginning where they're doing all their light speed skipping is insane to see it's got great color it, it's very sharp the the effects are awesome it hits a couple cool little locations in there before they finally get back to uh uh age on Claus, i think is the the name of the planet where their rebel base is um the uh battle between ray and kylo when they're fighting through the force and they're in different locations uh ray is on uh kylo star destroyer in his quarters and kylo's on kajimi uh that just looks insane uh the star destroyer is very bright kajimi is very dark the way they blend it all the hdr usage it's it's really um it is a sight to behold uh what what they can do with this format it's it's just it's really incredible so for the video on that one uh 8.5 out of 10 uh it is not my favorite looking film out of the three um but you know there there are some some pretty awesome moments in it uh same thing with the audio top notch 
uh, across the board. Uh, anytime the force is used, anytime a lightsaber is turned on, extreme workout for your subwoofers. When Rey and Kylo fight on the remains of the Death Star on on uh, the Kefbeer, the the forest moon of Endor's moon or whatever it is, uh, really really good stuff in there. Anytime Darth Sidious speaks, uh, Ian McDermott's voice is awesome and it's boomier and he's a little bit older so it's got a little more rasp to it in this one uh, and he just hams it up so much it sounds unbelievable it rattles your spine especially at the beginning when kylo goes to visit him on exegol uh, really really great stuff there uh, and then speaking of exegol that final battle uh, there's a lot going on uh, thousands of ships that come to to aid the the resistance horses explosions troopers ground battle space battle all sorts of stuff going on you're going to be looking around your living room checking to see if the stuff that's going on on screen isn't happening right next to you so uh really great uh, i would say for the audio on this one solid 9.5 out of 10. it is a reference track i would use it to demo off my system to somebody else so um yeah so i would say best looking one force awakens best sounding one rise of skywalker uh best cinematography runner-up the last jedi quality of the films definitely not getting into that one uh but if you want to leave me a comment let me know what you think that would be wonderful um i love star wars i love it with all my heart i know some people don't really care for these films much but uh i i enjoy them for what they are they have a place in my heart i own the discs for a reason i've bought them on digital i bought them on blu-ray i you know if it's Star Wars, I'm, I'm going to have it. I got the Mandalorian hat on. I got the Rogue One shirt. There's a solo poster behind me. Uh, I would highly recommend buying all of these because I think having all 11 films in your collection is definitely worthwhile. Uh, and all three of these have some really special stuff when it comes to the video and the audio. Uh, they're all worthy of, of having a movie night at the house and uh, showing off what your equipment can do for your friends. So um, that's going to do it for this one, guys. I uh, would love to hear from you. Uh, what sequel trilogy movie is your favorite? I shouldn't open up Pandora's box on that one, but I'm doing it. Uh, which one do you think looks the best? Which one do you think sounds the best? Uh, have you compared the Disney Plus streams to the 4K disc or to a Blu-ray? Uh, whatever you think, let me know in the comment below. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can do so absolutely for free. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on your notifications, notifications and share the video with your friends uh, we've got a lot more coming up here on the channel we got dc titans reviews marvel what if ted lasso some movies that are coming out it, we're, it's going to be a crazy rest of 2021 um, so please stay tuned with us for all of that and so much more until next time we'll see you guys in the next video